like, I th- feel like then we, we we're going to be critiqued. That's what's I feel like happen. we've just solved all the problems. I mean, I've been, <laughs> in the first five minutes of this podcast, I feel like we've given you information about weaponizing your competence and then solved all the problems of critique by saying run from them and then turning that into something good and calling it repentance. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Hey guys, welcome to the Babbling Pastor Podcast once again with your favorite, absolutely favorite host, Michael and... And wait a minute, why do you get to be the favorite? Your absolutely favorite hosts. I... Hosts. It's oh, two, oh, two. Okay. It's, S, it's an All S right. behind it. And with your favorite, absolutely favorite host, new favorite host. New favorite host. So okay. st- I thought like st- I thought you I thought that was like subliminal criticism. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Before I forget this, guys, this this is Rob. So I I want to I want this might feed into our topic today. But the other day I heard of something. I think it's from like the feminist camp. But it's called weaponized. Oh, I forgot it now. Weaponized incompetence. Okay, so let me explain weaponized incompetence. Weaponized incompetence. Sorry, guys. This is how this podcast is starting. <laughs> so weaponized incompetence is when a man refuses to do something because he's like he tells his wife, you can do it better. And so because he doesn't know how to do it, he'll weaponize his incompetence in order for her to do it. And so like mm. you can think of anything like uh, doing like doing the checkbook or uh, cooking or uh, fixing the car, whatever it is. I don't know how to do it. And so I'm not going to do it. And I'm going to need you to do it. And therefore I am weaponizing my incompetence to burden you further. So, so I, I feel I, like in, incompetence just by its very nature means that you're not smart enough to weaponize it. <laughs> you're too dumb to weaponize. You don't even <laughs> like, know. You don't know how to work know. this. <laughs> If if you can weaponize that, that's not that's no longer incompetence. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. I can't fold the laundry. What what human? Um, you know, like you know, maybe be... there will be some wrinkles, right? But but what human being uh, that's an adult does can't fold a shirt? You know what I mean? I don't know. That's I'm good. I'm gonna that, use that against yeah. my kids next time. They're like, I can't clean my room. Like, well, you're weaponizing your incompetence. Is what you're doing. You, you... <laughs> yeah. uh you're such a feminist okay guys sorry that's how we started this podcast so (laughs) this 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 section of podcast we're going to be talking about um critiquing pastors right so being critiqued what it looks like to be critiqued um if we've ever been critiqued all of those uh amazing things and i mean i and we were talking about this before up i know that neither of us has been critiqued in fact, I'd say out of both of us, you are probably the least critiqued because you're actually well, we, a full-time we have, pastor. We have somebody coming on, right? No? No. no. Nobody's going to... Well, what are we going to talk about then? Because... <laughs> well, per, really, that was just sort of a... Uh, what do they call that? Clickbait. That was a hook. And now we're just going to talk about... <laughs> Now we're just going to talk about how how amazing we are. That's that's the we're going to talk about how to critique others because yeah. that I mean we know how to do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> what I find what I find funny on that topic, right? So because I do sermon reviews every week, and because still against my better judgment, I am on Twitter. They um, I got back on by the way, so that was a dumb idea. So. <laughs> I always get told like, well, your view's always right, right? Like, you're never wrong. And I'm like, you don't realize how long it took to get to where I'm at in regards to, you know, critiquing myself and having to work through things and thinking about all this, you know what I mean? So I think as we talk about this today, we've done a fair amount of, uh, we've we've received a fair amount of criticism. We've taken a bit and, you know, we are right all the time. So. Um... You're not going to agree with that? Yeah, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> okay. Not true at all. Yeah. I think we're maybe we just need to end this podcast. I, I don't feel like you're on my team right now. I, I think, like you said, this has just started off. I, yeah. <laughs> so we just <laughs> okay. need so this is This is a good way to deal with criticism, actually. Yeah. Just, just, just stop just talking. Turn, a, turn around and bolt. 
that's, you you that's, critiqued uh, me. Yeah. And and technically, if you turn around and run, then you've repented because that's that's what the word means, right? That so is the definition um, of there's really no other requirement on uh, on your behalf than to just turn around, uh, do a 180, and run without giving it a second thought. That's what you. Um, yeah, we... you know what? If somebody just like listens to one little bit of this podcast and like. I feel Th- like then we, we, we're going to be critiqued. That's what's I feel like happen. we've just solved all the problems. I mean, I've been, that's... <laughs> in the first five minutes of this podcast, I feel like we've given you information about weaponizing your competence and then solved all the problems of critique by saying run from them and then turning that into something good and calling it repentance. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Problem solved. You gotta, you gotta, you, you know, when you're, when life gives you lemons, you gotta make lemonade, right? So th- yes, and that's what you know. When life gives you the Kool Aid, man, you have to make Kool Aid. Yeah. Uh, when the life gives you hmm. turtles, you make turtle soup. That sounds life... gross, actually. I've never had it. I've never had turtles. Yeah, me neither. I would feel like like I was eating a ninja, you know, <laughs> just because of how we grew up. Like. Oh. I saw the new one. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. So that was a buffer to see if you're actually serious about staying with this podcast. So let's go. <laughs> let's get into this is how the brains work. This is how the brains work. I think there's probably a technical term for it, like ADHD or something, but <clears throat> that's how the brains work. So as a pastor, you are going to get criticism. I mean, that's a fair. Is that a fair take? You're going to get some sort of criticism, right? <laughs> I think as a human, yeah, but but yeah, it's certainly in this in this role, yeah, you'll get you'll get some criticism. Yeah. So let let's dive into first, right? Knowing that, so if you are a pastor listening to this, you know that you're going to get criticism. If maybe you are just uh, maybe you're just a lay person listening to this, and you're like, I don't think they get that much criticism. Let's intro with that, right? Because I think sometimes people just don't really really understand how much criticism gets thrown at uh, their particular pastor or just pastors in general. Now, I'm lucky enough to be in a group chat with a bunch of pastors. I know a bunch of pastors locally. I know you. Um, And so I know that that's just not true. Obviously, there's a lot of criticism thrown toward pastors. So let's intro with that, right? So I think there's an idea that there's not as much criticism as there is maybe sometimes praise thrown toward pastors. So I'm going to try to correct that view a little bit. So we've talked about this before on the podcast. You've been in role for um, what, like about two, three years, right? Yeah. 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 Since okay. 2020. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so it was three years. So <laughs> within that time, let's talk about the first short amount of time. And then I'll kind of talk about some other instances that I know with pastors that have been in it for like quite a bit longer decades, maybe. But was that shocking to you whenever you came into that? Or was that expected, right? Whenever you took role? No, I think it was expected. Um, and and that that only because of how we grew up, right? Like, um, I've, in fact, I've had it pretty easy compared to some of the stories from our childhood, right? And teenage years and stuff. Like, I know, I know that. So, there's a certain sense that some pastors are like, depending on the denomination and how all of that works, like, um, that you might come along up upon some passages that, that worry you like, oh my gosh, if I actually preach this or whatever, like, am I going to get voted out next week (laughs) kind of a thing? Like, and I, I don't have to worry about that unless like I commit adultery or something. So (laughs) like, um, so uh, like to some degree I've had it easier than a lot of pastors, um, that, 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 I mean, it could be way worse, I guess is what I'm saying. So because, because of how we grew up and some of the things that I saw there, um, I, I'm, it was an expectation. I mean, it's part of the gig a little bit, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, like you said, there's quite a few that we have. Uh, well, I, there's one I can think of in particular that basically even if you change the music a little bit and then all of a sudden it's like, what are you doing? How dare you? <laughs> that was it. And so I think, again, it's one of those things that people... I think you need to understand, and this is why I would tell people to constantly pray for their pastors, constantly try to be encouraging to their pastors, uh, helpful as much as they can, because there are going to be things that um, 
And when I say criticism, I guess I should probably clarify what I mean by that. I'm not talking about like hardcore somebody sending you this scathing email of, you know, this was not exegetical and this point was terrible and you, you know, shouldn't even be a pastor, not qualified. As much as just like the little things. Like there was, I know, and probably I, this may be because of the area that I live, but um, I know of at least five pastors that. In, in order to like try to maybe modernize more, they would put up like a projector or something like that in their church. And something as innocuous as that for some people caused them a whole lot of criticism for people. I mean, people legit left the church because of that. And so it was one of those things. And you could say, hey, those, you know, those people are being petty and, da, 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 and you'd be right. But the idea being that like even those small things, I think pastors have to consider in regards to like that, that's criticism toward the pastor because they made the ultimate decision there. Let's do this. Let's, you know, for whatever reason, we're putting this up and then you're getting pushback on something that again, isn't even uh, in comparison to all the things that you mentioned before that people could give you pushback on. That's the thing you're receiving criticism on. And then with that criticism comes this questioning of yourself, or at least a lot of the people that I've talked to, it mm -hmm. does, because then you go, okay, well, was that worth it to lose this person, that person, or this family over the, you know, you're, you're constantly, at least again, talking to the guys that I talked to weighing, did the ends justify the means in all of these decisions? So every decision that comes up now, you're weighing the, you know, you're weighing that out. Is this going to make somebody leave? And is that worth it in regards to that and having to make those decisions? And then, being held accountable for if you do lose two or three families and then having to explain that decision. And so there's this constant weight of criticism and having to explain that criticism to other people um, that then may also leave <laughs> because of the decision you made beforehand. And so I think it's, I don't think people really process that pastors have that on their mind a, a lot of the time, at least the, again, the mm -hmm. ones I talk to. Yeah, it's um, I think, um, I think there's uh, several, you know, like, like you mentioned, um, a second ago, there's several different kinds of criticism for sure. And, um, and so whenever, whenever any kind of criticism comes up, um, it, it's, it, it's important. I think first and foremost, um, you know, like we've all seen the, the clips of like the police officers, right. Who, uh, get in trouble or whatever, because they overreacted and those kinds of things. Um, like the reason that that's a big deal is because the police officer is supposed to be above board, right? Like the, the, they're supposed to, um, and it was the same way when I was in the, the Marine Corps, when it comes to being with the public in some way or civilians, um, that, that police officer has an obligation to stay cool, even in ridiculous situations, right? When people are screaming at you or whatever else. And so there's an expectation that, 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 uh, policeman or law enforcement officer is gonna, um, to maintain, um, his, uh, his presence of mind in that, in that kind of moment. And so whenever that doesn't happen, it really stands out and it looks bad and it's not good. Right. And I think, uh, being a pastor is the same way when it comes to that, right? Like no matter what the criticism is, the, the first thing that you have to do, um, is just like, don't engage if, if there's a, if there's a, a temper tantrum kind of being thrown or something that, that someone's at, visibly upset or whatever, um, you, you have to remain even keel, right? Like you have to remain calm no matter the situation. Um, at least, uh, uh, yeah, within reason, no matter the situation. And, and, um, and so there's that, like, that's the first thing. And then, um, and then I think the very second thing is, uh, you, you have to let that person know somehow, um, uh, not like not downplay it. Right. Um, but, but to act like, like we have to search our hearts like everybody else, right? Like we have to, uh, if, if someone brings something up that is, uh, a criticism of some sort, um, well then uh, no matter who it is, I have an obligation to ask myself, is that true? <laughs> right. Um, and, and I mean that, that's a legitimate thing. I've, I have, uh, received criticism once before. And then uh, the next Sunday had to say, change something that I said or correct something that I said in a sermon 
the the prior week. So, um, and, and that was because after listening to the criticism, thinking about it, uh, researching, looking at the scriptures, I I had to I had to fix that <laughs> because I, I made a comment that wasn't in my notes that just wasn't accurate. And so, um, so that like that happens, like there are times that you'll be criticized and it was, um, now to be, to be fair, it was, um, uh, it was, uh, one of my elders, which is something that is necessary, right? Like you need, um, leadership that is willing to pull you aside and, and do that. Um, and that elder did it the right way. Um, you know, I think one of the main things to think about, one of the main verses to keep in mind, if, if there's a scenario in which you have to criticize or bring something up like that is Ephesians 4 29, which says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up. Um, and, and that's the, and that's the point of it, right? If you have to say something that, that is going to sound mean or bad or whatever, um, you should do it as tactfully and lovingly as possible, um, with a with a, the right demeanor. Remembering such for some of you, remembering brother sister relationship, you know, and um, and and the motive must be for building up. Um, unfortunately, that's not that's like you know, like three percent of criticism, right? But <laughs> yeah, what I think I think that's a good place. So let's let's. Let's hit there for a second as far as like the 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 purpose of it, right? So there is going to be yeah. criticism lobbed. So going back to the examples I gave before in regards to, um, you know, whatever whatever decision is made, there will be criticism of it in favor or not. And the bigger the church gets or the more people that are there and the more people that are bought into it, obviously the the, the more drastic that criticism usually will be from one side or the other. And so at that point, it's really, I think, whenever you're, if somebody's bringing criticism or even when you're receiving it, I think there's that twofold thing there of, you know, the person receiving it, so the pastor receiving the criticism, really asking, like, what's, like, what's the purpose of this criticism? Is it just to criticize to criticize or is it there because, you know, there's, you know, some legitimate thing. And I think from, from the person bringing it, that's something I've got some messages before and they're like, well, I think this is, my pastor is doing this wrong. I was like, well, have you even talked to them about it? And when you have talked to them about it, like what's your approach been? <laughs> because if it's, if you're, if the purpose is I gotcha, like I, I got, I got you now. Like, obviously I don't know, like that's not a healthy way to approach the situation as a gotcha moment. Uh, yeah. it's, it's the idea of like, did, did you see this or did I misunderstand you? And again, the purpose is coming at it from a, 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 a humble standpoint saying, maybe I did misunderstand you. Maybe I didn't hear you right. I'm just concerned about maybe the wording here. And that's what you were talking about there. Somebody came to you and said, Hey, what about this? And then you're, again, it was for the purpose of, of correction, but building up. And then you received it and saw his point. And then corrected it, and that I—that's the ideal, right? Scenario, right? Is somebody coming and say, "Hey, I saw something, and I had a question about it." And his whole purpose wasn't to tear you down. He's a fellow elder, so his whole purpose is uh, unity and building up and making sure you know that you're above yep. board as well. And that makes the response all that much easier because now, because you know he's coming to you in a manner that's you know purposeful, that's for building up. There's not a defense mechanism that goes up that says, no, I'm right, you're wrong right away. There's not a pushback yeah. that comes. There's an actual considering like, oh, OK, maybe you did see something that I didn't catch. Because, again, like you said, and almost always, like if somebody brings up a point to the pastor, like you said, I think I heard you right where you said you went off your notes. So it's one of those things where it was an honest mistake. <laughs> like it's not, I mean, it, you, it, and for every pastor out there, we have all done that at some point where we literally have our notes laid out. We go off script for a second. And normally all the dumb stuff happens when you go off script for a second. Um, and because you haven't normally fully thought all the way through that thought. So you're, you're very likely to say something that maybe isn't going to, it's not a fully developed thought in the first place. So it's going to come off as something a little weird, but being able to receive that, I think like that scenario that you just brought up, I think is the perfect scenario in regards to somebody coming for the purpose of building up. 
you not being defensive about it and actually looking at it and the end scenario being what the end scenario should be which is correction and building up all happening with criticism occurring right i mean that that's Hey guys, what you just finished was the first section of a much longer podcast in which me and Rob discuss criticism and how to take and give criticism as a pastor. If you're interested in the entire podcast, it's actually already been uploaded, the full thing, to our Patreon page if you want to check that out and support us there. If not, make sure you check back next week for the second installment of this podcast. Hope to see you there and I hope you find it helpful.